Hey, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about True Audio's luxury outdoor sound product portfolio. The goal of today's presentation is to help you feel more comfortable talking about True Audio products and where True Audio's outdoor products may better fit in your various projects. If you're looking for something a little bit more advanced in regards to technical installation, expertise, best practices, that's not this presentation. We will be talking at a high level about some installation methodologies to help you understand the differences between the, the various systems that we offer in the outdoor vertical. However, if you're looking for something a little more technical, that's going to be in a future presentation. So today we want to talk to you about True Audio as a company, and then we'll go ahead and take a deep dive into products. So let's kick things off. First, uh, my name is Chase Harrison. I'm the Vice President of Sales for True Audio. And another name I'd like to get uh, very familiar with is Yvette Kelsey. She is our strategic account manager and ultimately our champion for our outdoor product category and vertical. Between the two of us, if you have any questions about how the products install, how to sell the products, how to position the products, how to design a system, the two of us are going to be your best resource. If at all, during this presentation or in the future, if you have any questions about our outdoor products, feel free to email sales at trueaudio.com and a member of our team, or perhaps myself and Yvette, will be, jump, will be happy to jump in and help you take care of whatever questions or concerns you may have. So. Uh, before we jump into the product, I do want to talk to you a little bit about True Audio, where we've come from, and uh, give you a little bit of background on us to help you feel a little bit more comfortable positioning the True Audio brand and product set. So we were actually founded about uh, 20 years ago. We were founded by a group of professional installers, chances are much like yourself. Uh, we were very tired of doing business with big companies that were hard to work with, what, from a customer service perspective, from a sales, inventory, advanced warranty replacement. Whatever it may be, there were a number of things that were a little unhappy with some of the manufacturers we were working with. We wanted to change that as we came to market. Some of our core mantras are being the absolute easiest com company that you could do business with. That comes from order fulfillment, customer service, tech support, design, uh, online ordering, whatever it may be. We'd like to try and strive to be the best company that you, uh, an easiest company that you have ever worked with. Because uh, you, you are potentially wondering why True Audio is maybe not a, a household brand, even though we've been around 20 years. And by household brand, I mean like a Bose or JBL or a Klipsch. The reason why is we only ever service the professional installer or the professional installer marketplace. We've only ever got to market through our professional installer partners, and uh, we've never gone to market directly to the consumer. So we've never really focused on growing brand recognition with the end user up until the last couple of years, because we haven't really had a need to. Uh, with that professional installer mindset, we have put a lot of time, energy, and effort into making sure our products are the absolute best in the marketplace. They sound the best, they price the best, and you uh, can feel comfortable recommending True Audio products to your customers and they're going to stand the test of time. Uh, even though we are located in uh, a smaller town in Southern Utah, we are a global brand. Uh, out of our Herc in Utah location, we service Western Canada, the Western United States, and South America, and some of our other international customers. We do have a logistics location in Atlanta, Georgia, also in the United Kingdom, in Amsterdam, and then over in Asia. So once again, you can see we are a global brand. We've been around for 20 years, and uh, we've, we, we have kind of grown up inside of the house and outside. We have products set that uh, service both the inside of the house demands as well as the outside. As far as where we stand in the marketplace, we like to think that we are superior in both our acoustic performance as well as our... Uh, value for the performance meaning you're going to get an awesome price and a phenomenal speaker for a great for a great price we also like to tout that we have the best uh, construction and warranties on the market meaning our products are designed to hold up to the test of time we offer a five-year warranty on any true audio branded products that go outside of the house uh, we have uh, that same warranty that also involves or includes our amplifiers if you look at a lot of our peers, a lot of our competitors, they only offer one, two, or maybe even a three years at most warranty. But uh, that five-year warranty hopefully shows you that we believe in our products and we know that uh, once you install them, you're not going to worry about them in the future. And if for whatever reason you do have a failure, we have an awesome servant customer service team. We'll take care of you. We, or we believe in advanced replacements, getting you taken care of, getting your customer back up and running. So the last thing they have to worry about is their audio and whatever project they're in. Uh, one of the things that separates us from a lot of our competitors is we, we maintain a very strict no online sales policy. Uh, the reason for this is, once again, we were founded by a group of installers. We know what it's like to compete against your manufacturer. We know what it's like to compete against other installers. Last thing we want to do is provide any sort of margin pressure for you and your business. We understand margin is how you pay for your overhead, run your trucks, cover your warranties, 
and offer the same great service that your customers have come to know and love. So if there's any problems with this or any questions, uh, please email sales at trueaudio.com. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have, or if by chance you do find our products being sold online, uh, please let us know immediately. We'd love to get it taken care of and get it taken down. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the actual product portfolio at the, at the time. We're going to, before we dive into the products themselves, I wanna help you kind of delineate between the two. So we like to break our outdoor product category into two uh, basically macro or master categories. And then from there, we have different products that fill in the, uh, the various uh, categories. So in the patio systems, those are gonna be for smaller spaces, they're gonna be more of our surface mount products. And our landscape systems are going to be for larger spaces and uh, for larger venues. And we will actually go ahead and dive into both and kind of help you understand what the uh, importance is between both systems, how to position both those systems, the, the products that make up those systems in your various projects. So first we'll talk about patio solutions. Uh, if you're trying to define patio solutions in your mind, let me help you out a little bit. We're talking about smaller living spaces or smaller commercial spaces. In this particular photo, it gives you an idea of a, what a smaller backyard would look like. Obviously, you've got a house, a deck, a small eating area. This is an area where you could leverage any of our patio type products and uh, provide a, a one of a kind listening experience to your customers. And once again, it doesn't have to be residential. It can very much be commercial. If you're servicing maybe a smaller cafe, smaller outdoor living space, uh, where your customer wants to uh, provide background audio or foreground audio, our patio systems are going to be one, or you're going to want to use our patio systems there. Uh, what makes up a patio system? We have our surface mount uh, products. We have our OLs, our OPs, in both white and black. We have our rock speakers, which are actually designed to be out in the garden or listing area and point, kind of pointed in towards wherever your, wherever your customers reside. The amplifiers that we primarily use inside of the outdoor living category or patio category is our Amp 440, which is this guy right here, as well as our T100. We'll go ahead and take a little bit deeper dive in each one of these products to help you better understand and become familiar with them. The OL series, uh, it is probably our uh, best performance for our best price. It's gonna be the most uh, aggressively priced product. It's designed once again for smaller living spaces. Uh, this is going to be your covered lanai's, your covered patios, uh, smaller pools, maybe above ground pools. Uh, if you have a small barn or a small shed where you'd like some audio, the OLs are gonna do wonderfully for you. Uh, one of the biggest differentiators between the OLs and some of the other products is there a smaller form factor. It's got a three quarter inch tweeter, titanium tweeter, and a five and a quarter inch poly woofer. This is important to remember as you jump in or dive into our bigger products with bigger tweeters, bigger woofers. Uh, the larger the surface area on the tweeter and the woofer, that's uh, gonna allow us to give you louder volumes. And specifically with the woofer, it's gonna allow us to give you better low end in your music or better bass. We call it bass response. So. Uh, the OLs also, you'll notice that the they like to see anywhere between 5 and 80 watts consistently. Uh, they can take an occasional bump over 80 watts. That's called a peak rating. But as long as you've got an amplifier that's going to give them anywhere from 5 to 80 watts, you're going to be comfortable. They're going to play very well. Obviously, the higher the power rating, uh, as you may know, uh, the louder your speakers are actually going to be able to play. Uh, jumping into the OPs, these are a little bit more high performance of a speaker, meaning there's a larger tweeter, larger woofer. Obviously, with uh, the better performance is going to come with a little bit uh, more expensive of a price tag. Uh, we will talk about that here in just a second. Um, main distinguisher here between the OLs and the OPs is the OPs actually have a 6-inch and an 8-inch poly woofer. A larger woofer is going to give you that better bass response, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's got that 1-inch silk dome tweeter. You'll see, obviously, the power rating as well between the 6s and the 8s is quite a bit uh, more robust compared to the OLs. Well, so you're going to be able to get louder volumes. Because you're going to be able to get louder volumes, and these are a little bit more high performance of the speaker, you're going to be able to start covering medium to even large outdoor spaces. That's going to be maybe a larger pool area, larger barn, uh, larger patio, outdoor cafe, uh, covered lanai, pergola, and so on. Uh, these are available in white and black. And another major differentiator between the OLs and the OPs is their ability to both pan and tilt. The OLs can only be moved side to side. Uh, in a vertical mount position and a horizontal position, they're only going to be able to move top to bottom. The nice thing about the OPs is you can mount them vertically or horizontally, and you're going to maintain the ability to both pan and tilt or raise the speaker up and down or move it left to right. So you'll be able to really dial in wherever your primary listening positions are, kind of your sweet spot in your, in your outdoor living space. 
Okay, uh, in the amplifier category. So we'll start with our AMP 440. It's a great little amplifier. It can drive up to four speakers uh, at the same time. It uh, gives you four channels at four, uh, 40 watts per channel. The four channel rating is also equivalent to the number of speakers that it can handle. So if you see four channels, it can drive four speakers. It is a class D amplifier, so it consumes very little power, especially when it's in standby mode. It also features an auto switching uh, capability where you can actually plug in a satellite box and say a Bluetooth or Sonos, and you can set priority of what you'd like the amplifier to switch to based on your customer's needs or demands. Uh, the other nice thing about the AMP 440 is you can actually use its loop out uh, connectors to jump into additional amplifiers. So if your project maybe uh, calls for more than four speakers and you want to maybe jump into six or eight or even more, you can actually come out of your source device, go into your first AMP 440 via the set of inputs here, and then you see this uh, output here, which is also known as a loop out. You can jump into a second, third, or even a fourth AMP 440. Uh, I will tell you on all of our amplifiers, but we like to be what's called source agnostic, meaning we don't just assume that Bluetooth is going to be the source you're always going to want to use, so we don't build it into our amplifiers. We don't want to assume that Sonos or Vessel or some automation system is going to be the system you're only ever going to want to use in all of your projects. We'll talk about sourcing here in just a minute, but we figure that if we can provide an amplifier that's capable of working with all those systems, that you're going to have the best bet and the best success working with True Audio. So by source agnostic meaning, we don't really care what you bring as a source, so long as it can provide an analog audio output via RCA, or you can do a digital toss into our AMP 440 and our T100, which is this little uh, trap door right here. So uh, once again, if you have any questions on sourcing, uh, please email us at sales at trueaudio.com. We'll also take the opportunity now to mention our free system design service. Uh, it's a service that can take anywhere from one to five business days, depending on how complex the project is and what our current uh, backlog is. We, uh, we can take anything as rough as a napkin, a drawing on a napkin, uh, to an address in Google uh, Google Maps, and then we can zoom in. If the project's been around a little while, we can zoom in, obviously take a screenshot of that and work with that. Or in best case scenario, you've got a, case, a set of drawings that potentially landscape architects put together or uh, some concepts that we can actually work with. Uh, we can take those and actually place speakers uh, inside of the project, speakers and subs. I'll show you an example here towards the end of the presentation. But also through that, we can recommend amplification, we can recommend sourcing, we can help you understand uh, and, and work through and vet out the customer's requirements to help make sure that you're ultimately giving the best experience and add to the customer and exactly what they want. Jumping into the T100. Uh, this is a, a little bit more high performance of an amplifier. This is going to be for your uh, Ultrascape system, which we'll talk about here in just a second, but it also works really well with those OP6s and those OP8.2s, which we talked about earlier. Uh, what's a little bit different compared to the uh, AMP 440 is this is only going to be a two channel at 100 watts per channel amplifier. Meaning in most scenarios, you're only going to be able to drive two speakers with this uh, T100. And those speakers are going to actually be able to provide 100 watts per channel. So those OP6s, OP8s that are rated over 100 watts, that's what they are going to really like working with the T100 because you're going to be able to provide a better listening experience, louder volumes, one part of this amplifier. It, like the AMP 440, is also a class D amplifier, meaning it doesn't consume a whole lot of power, especially in standby, in standby mode. Just like the AMP 440, you can actually go into this T100, and you can, you can loop out into multiple amplifiers if you need to scale uh, the number of speakers that you have in a project. Uh, it also requires a source device, and uh, it uh, is a very flexible amplifier. You can actually go into additional subwoofer amplifiers, and you can also teach it various IR remotes from various TV manufacturers, uh, or from even an automation system. So the T100 can pretty much be considered like a Swiss Army knife from, uh, of amplifiers. Uh, to give you an idea of what some of our products price out at uh, from a retail perspective, if you take two of our OLs and partner it up with our AMP 440, you can see that retails for $713. One thing to note is there's no installation labor built into this price, there's no speaker wire, and there's no source device. So you wanna make sure that you factor those in when you're putting your, your project proposal again. If you were to uh, double the number of OLs that go into the project, you'll notice that the MSRP jumps up a little bit. Once again, this price does not include labor, source device, or speaker wire. Uh, something I'll mention on speaker wire, uh, we recommend our direct burial unified copper 14 gauge uh, two conductor 
wire. What's nice about that is it doesn't actually have to go into a conduit. You can actually bury it right in the ground. You can leave it exposed if you'd like. Uh, it, uh, if, if the speaker wire is not anything that uh, you're comfortable with, perhaps you already have some landscape lighting wire that you're comfortable with. As long as it's a high copper purity, oxygen free stranded cable, minimum of 16 or 14 gauge, uh, it's going to be able to work really well with the OLs and the OPs. When we get into the Ultrascape system and the Landscape system, we recommend that a minimum of 14 gauge two conductor wire be used and actually get into a 12 gauge wire if you can. Uh, jumping into the OP 6.2s to kind of give you an idea of what the price spread looks like. Here's a retail price on two OP 6.2s. You can see that increases a little bit over the OLs. We jump to four OPs, a little bit larger of a price. Once again, these are high performance speakers, so you're going to be paying a little bit more of a premium for these because you're, go you're going to be getting an ult uh, ultimately a better listening experience. And finally, OP 8.2s, both in a pair and two pair. You'll notice that the retail price does increase a little bit more. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention on the installation, I did mention at the beginning of this presentation, is that we're not going to take a deep dive in installation, but I feel appropriate to talk to you a little bit about how a patio system typically installs to help you kind of differentiate between patio systems, ultrascape system, as well as a landscape system. So typical patio install, with our, especially with our surface mount products, you're going to need to take a speaker wire from the back of your surface mount products and move it and, and run it directly to the back of the amplifier. You're going to need to do that for every single one of the speakers that's in that project. This, you'll notice there is a red and a black line here that represents a red and a black or positive and a negative conductor. And our 14 gauge speaker wire, you'll notice that those already come included in that, in that speaker wire and they're already color coded. So really easy to make sure you terminate uh, red to positive, black to negative. Those speaker wires then come once again down and terminate into the positive and negative terminals. We're also known as a Phoenix connector in the back of our M440. Uh, the difference in this is obviously you have to home run a speaker wire to every single one of these speakers back to the amplifier. Our other systems do not require that. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Another thing to notice is we're using kind of a black or blank source device here. We're showing you once again that the AMP 440 doesn't really care what kind of, uh, or any of our amplifiers, do, they don't really care what sort of source device you're using, so long as you can come out and plug into the RCA inputs in the back of the amplifier. Okay, now we're gonna jump into the Ultrascape system. This is a very exciting category for us because we've been able to introduce a product that kind of bridges our existing patio systems and our larger landscape systems. Because the Ultrascape system only services smaller spaces, we qualify it under and, and classify it under the patio system. The, uh, what makes up the Ultrascape system is satellite speakers, like you see here in this picture, and subwoofers. These satellite speakers are actually designed to go hide inside of your living space and be spread only about 8 to 10 feet apart. Once again, you can see the need for a smaller space. The subwoofers themselves, there's two available. They're both 8-inch subwoofers. There's an above-ground subwoofer. Should your project uh, have a high water table or perhaps maybe made of uh, concrete, pavers, be all hardscape and you don't have the ability to bury the subwoofer, that's where this application, this subwoofer is going to fit best. Uh, if you have the ability to, to bury the subwoofer, uh, the buried sub, also known as ST-8, is going to be able to, or is gonna be your best bet. It's also gonna be your strongest from a visual perspective because even though this is blaze orange, uh, it is not designed to stay above the ground, so it's not very visually intrusive. Uh, you actually bury it up to about halfway up the support tube right here, and you only see the top end of the support tube, also known as mushroom top. So if your customer's demands are that they don't see the speakers, they just want to be able to hear them, this, is the, this uh, system here on the right is going to be the one you want to use. As far as how to wire an Ultrascape system up, this is important for a number of different reasons. You'll notice that there's quite a bit of a difference between a patio system, a typical patio system, and the Ultrascape system. As I mentioned earlier, typically any amplifier for the number of channels that it's rated at, you can only have that number of speakers. Because of the technology and the engineering that we've put inside of the Ultrascape, you're actually able not only to run a subwoofer, but four speakers off of a two channel amplifier. Uh, because of the engineering and the resources that we put in the side of the Ultrascape, you can actually drive the Ultrascape with any customer's two channel amplifier. It comes up on a very regular basis where a customer's asking us, hey listen, my customer actually has, my end user, has a stereo amplifier, has an amplifier that's not being used, or my customer has space on his automation system amplifier and he'd really like to have an outdoor audio system. Do you have something we can use? Enter the Ultrascape system. As long as your amplifier is six ohm stable and has a, a power rating of 75 to 150 watts, 
then the ultra system will partner beautifully with your amplifier and provide you a great listening experience. If you're curious or concerned that the amplifier your customer is asking you to use does not have the appropriate specifications, send us an email with a make and model number. We'll look it up for you and we'll tell you whether or not that amplifier would be a good fit with the Ultrascape system. If it's not, we obviously have the T100 that we can recommend for you and, and provide to you. It's a great price amplifier. It's very robust. Also comes with a five-year warranty. Uh, we also notice once again, uh, basically a blank or agnostic source device. We're plugging that in via a RCA cable into the back of our T100. You can use an RCA to RCA, or you can use a three and a half millimeter RCA. That uh, doesn't matter to us, so long as the as signal is analog. Uh, you also notice uh, that we, with the T100, we actually come into the subwoofer and daisy chain out to the speakers. Once again, that is a huge differentiator between the patio system and the ultrascape system. Uh, you cannot daisy chain speakers outside of the ultrascape system. Another thing I'll mention regarding the ultrascape system, uh, another question that we get on a very regular basis, is can I add another pair of speakers or can I just drop this to two speakers or can I add another sub? Uh, the unfortunate reality is, is because of the technology that we put into the sub and the speakers, it basically uh, confines you to a maximum of four speakers and one sub for every amplifier that you put into the project. So if you have multiple areas that you want to cover with multiple ultrascapes or a little bit larger areas and you want to use just the ultrascape, at that point we'd have to have you add a second ultrascape system for a second sub and a second set of four speakers with another amplifier. So the capabilities are there. You can actually par uh, marry those two amplifiers together so they're always playing the same source. Uh, you just can't add additional speakers wired up to this same amplifier. Again, if that's a, a little hard to understand, please email us or give us a call. We'd be happy to walk you through that and make you feel comfortable with it. Once again, the Ultrascape system is designed for smaller spaces. I mentioned earlier that you're only supposed to, uh, we only recommend you spacing those speakers any, uh, from eight to 10 feet apart. Uh, you'll notice in the landscape system, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit, you can space those speakers quite a bit further apart. Once again, this picture is really to help you understand that you can take this and cover smaller listening areas. Perhaps this is a fire pit. Uh, obviously, you can do a smaller kitchen. If you're just trying to cover your uh, uh, listening area, the Ultrascape system is going to be the way to go. Kind of give you an idea of how the Ultrascape system prices out. Uh, we have the above ground sub with four landscape speakers. Once again, you'll notice there are no source devices, there's no amplifier, and there's no speaker wire uh, tucked into this MSRP. Uh, we do provide you an example here in the next slide of that. We have the buried sub that you'll see that retails for 21, 22, 50. If you add a source device like a Bluetooth uh, adapter and a T100, once again, this does not include installation labor or any speaker wire. Retail price does jump up a little bit to account for those additional products. And that's pretty much the Ultrascape system. Uh, we, uh, once again, are excited about that system. It fills a great uh, hole in our lineup. It uh, kind of bridges the gap between the patio system and the landscape system. Sounds phenomenal. Provides a great solution for a lot of customers. We're going to jump into the landscape system now. This has been an awesome category for us. It's probably, in the history of True been the most successful category for a number of reasons. The biggest being it's very reliable. It's scalable. It can service pretty much any project out there. And it sounds amazing. If your customer wants a very smooth, background audio listening experience, the landscape system can provide it. If the customer wants a very loud, you know, rock concert type experience in their backyard, living space, commercial environment, the landscape system can provide it. I'm gonna get you a little bit more comfortable with that and uh, we'll talk about a free system design that you can leverage in conjunction with this landscape system to service really any customer. What makes up the landscape system is a number of different products. Number one, the speakers. Uh, you'll notice there's two different sizes here. The one on the right is called our AS1. It's a four and a half inch speaker with a one inch silk dome tweeter. Our larger speaker is our AS2 with a six and a half inch woofer and a one inch silk dome tweeter. We always recommend the AS2 over the AS1 because it's the most flexible. It's gonna be able to provide soft background music and also give you the volumes you're gonna need for your loud, uh, your loud music or your louder listening experiences. If the customer's uh, pre preference is visual performance over acoustic performance, meaning they don't really wanna see the speaker, They'd like it to blend into their existing environment, potentially look like their landscape lights. AS1 is going to be the speaker you're going to want to go with. But it's very important that you qualify with the customer, kind of get an idea of where their mind's at and where they'd like to, what they'd like to spend, and ultimately what they'd like to see and hear in their living space. Uh, the subwoofers that make up the landscape system are 12-inch above-ground subwoofers. You'll notice that unlike the Ultrascape system, there's two color options. There's a tan and a brown. And then in the buried version, there's uh, two different sizes. There's a 10 inch and a 12 inch. 
the 10 inch, no matter the size of the amplifier, you're only ever going to be able to put two in, the, in one project for, a, uh, for one amplifier. If you have multiple amplifiers, obviously you can scale above two subwoofers. Once again, please use our design service to help you understand that a little bit better. The 12th subwoofer, you actually have the ability to scale from one sub up to 10 subs, depending on the size of amplifier. Uh, the reason for that, we'll talk about here in a second, it's called a 70 volt transformer, and I'll help you feel a little more comfortable with that. Note uh, that patio systems are not available, uh, or excuse me, not, com not compatible in this particular setup. You can have both patio and landscape speakers in the same project. You just have to have the different amplifiers to drive the different components, which we'll talk about once we talk about, or once we get to the frequently asked questions. Lastly, you'll notice this amplifier here does not say true audio. There's a good reason for this. Uh, the Crown amplifier, specifically the Crown amp line, has been around for a long time. They provide a great commercial type uh, application and amplifier that's designed to really stand up to the elements, well, not elements, but they're designed to stand up to the test of time. Chances are, if you go to a concert hall, symphony hall, outdoor venue, uh, nightclub, the amplifiers are going to be driving the speakers in that particular environment. Chances are they're a crown amplifier. Uh, we really like the crown amplifier because there's some really cool things that go on inside of the guts of the amplifier, like digital signal processing and so on. Things that you don't really need to worry about, we actually go ahead and program all of the, what are called presets, to be compatible to make the crown amplifier compatible with all of our products all you have to do is take it out of the box hook speaker wires to the back adjust the volume knobs turn the power on and then select the part number for the project that you're using right on the front of the amplifier and then it'll take care of the rest takes care of all the programming takes care of all the tuning if you have any questions on that or concerns we'd be happy to answer them and again please email us at sales at tradio.com Okay, so landscape systems in a nutshell. Why we have come up with the landscape system technology. Uh, long before landscape systems were ever around or ever invented, it used to be you have to only work with patio systems or patio products. So in this particular scenario, you'll notice that there's a house here and obviously a larger living space. If you had a pool or patio or a potentially an outdoor kitchen tucked out here, maybe a little miniature golf course or some sort of other feature that your customer wants covered with audio, History would say you have to put surface mount speakers up against the residence or the pro shop, or the clubhouse, or whatever it is here, and then you have to turn the volume up to get your volume for your speakers, your audio, out in whatever living space they're, uh, your customer is trying to cover. The problem with that is anybody who's living up against the side of the house or maybe hanging out, uh, they're going to be miserable because the volume is going to be so loud to get your audio out into your living space. Now into our landscape system, or also the ultrascape system in smaller spaces, you can take speakers and hide them throughout the project strategically, so you're providing a very uniform, very balanced, very immersive listening experience. You can also then, once you have all your speakers and your subs placed and hidden throughout the project, you can both raise your volume and lower your volume uniformly. So you can now go throughout the entire project, you can imagine a pool or a tennis court, pickleball court, bocce ball court, and as you traverse the backyard, if it's soft background music or if it's really loud music that you'd like to listen to, uh, the landscape audio system is going to be your best bet. It's going to be, give you the best listening experience, the most emotion invoking listening experience possible. The other nice thing about the landscape uh, system is it uh, is very directional, at least the speakers are. So you can see from this particular scenario, we work at the outside of the project and face all the speakers in towards the primary listening areas to keep any noise bleed from affecting your neighbors or potentially next door uh, or any of your re residents that live uh, close by. The subwoofers, unfortunately, are omnidirectional. They kind of go everywhere with their noise. So what we do in our design services, we actually take that into account and try and place the subwoofers to the center line of the projects to keep any sort of noise bleed as it goes into, uh, to keep from going into your neighbors. Uh, the system is very easy to install. Once again, it is scalable, and it blends effortlessly into your, into your living spaces. Kind of give you an idea of what a run-of-the-mill landscape system would cost. With a crown amplifier, a buried 12-inch subwoofer, and six of our AS2s, it's going to retail for $6,485. You'll notice there's no installation labor, no speaker wire, no source device that's still need to go into this. Uh, once again, to kind of help you delineate and understand the difference between a landscape system and the other systems we've already talked about, on the back of the crown amplifier, you're going to install speaker wire that's going to run out to your first AS1 or your AS2, and it's going to daisy chain out to your second, your third, your fourth, and so on depending on how many speakers you have in the project. The nice thing, as I mentioned, that the systems are scalable, so if you wanted to start with just one or two speakers, four speakers, and potentially the customer wants you to come back 
uh, because he loves the audio so much, you can actually pick up right where you left off and go up to eight speakers behind what's called the CDI 1000 or the Crown 1000. You also notice that there's a speaker wire that is, or sorry, a pair of conductors or speaker wire that run out to the subwoofer. It's a dedicated feed out to the subs. Uh, you can uh, daisy chain up to two subs, two 12 inch subs behind a single current amplifier, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in this particular scenario, we do recommend 14 gauge two conductor wire. Uh, direct burial grade is obviously preferred. If you have something that needs to run in conduit, that's fine, but you're welcome to also source the R Unified Copper Direct Burial Wire. Once again, we we're using kind of a blank uh, source device here to kind of help you remind, remember, remember that uh, we don't care what sort of source you're bringing. The crown amplifier only is ever gonna wanna see an analog input. It does not uh, account for digital input, which if you have to have a digital input into the back of a crown amplifier, please use our design service. We have other means to get, help you get that converted into analog. Okay, so that's what's the landscape system. Uh, once again, it's, it's been one of our most successful categories in the history of Toronto because of how well it sounds and how well it prices out. If you haven't had a chance uh, or the privilege to listen to that landscape system, uh, please contact us. We actually have uh, reps that travel on a very regular basis that uh, do come out with demo kits. We're happy to provide you a uh, 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 private listening demonstration so you can get a little bit more comfortable with our landscape audio systems. Now we're gonna take a dive into source of music. This is probably the most complicated part of any outdoor audio solution. It doesn't need to be, but it is often the thing that's probably forgotten about until the very end. So I wanna bring it up now. It's important as you talk to your customer about their outdoor living environment, especially their outdoor music, of what kind of music they like to listen to and how they like to access that music. If the customer is a big fan of records or CD players, that's fine, we can work with that. We just have to tuck that next to the amplifier and provide an analog RCA input into the back of the amplifiers from whatever source device they're using. In today's day and age, it's really popular to be able to use streaming music, streaming services like Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Apple Music, and so on. In order to get those streaming, uh, or those audio streams into our amplifiers, there's a couple of different devices that we lean on. Uh, the first being Bluetooth, uh, another one being Vessel, and the third being the Sonos Connect. We're actually going to go ahead and talk about all three of those units now to help you feel a little bit more comfortable with them and where to recommend them for your customer. First, we're going to talk about Bluetooth. It allows you to uh, use the Bluetooth technology built into your phone, your tablet, or your computer, sync up with the Bluetooth adapter, and stream anything that's currently on that phone or any app that's on that tablet or phone or computer, and push it right into the audio system. The advantage is obviously to Bluetooth. It's very cost-effective. It's very easy to hook up. The disadvantages to Bluetooth, as you're probably all familiar with, is it's very distance limited. Once you start getting uh, beyond 20 or 30 feet from the Bluetooth adapter, you're going to start getting the, the customary Bluetooth chop that you're familiar with. It's going to start losing connection and it's not going to be very reliable. The other thing about Bluetooth is if your customer is using their phone to stream music, they will probably get an interruption or a text tone or even a phone call alert through the audio system, which is not going to be anything they want to hear. Uh, so Bluetooth, once again, is it is good, especially for budget systems. And if you can leave the Bluetooth receiver in whatever living space uh, you have or whatever project you have, if there are any chances that you're going to run into obstructions, the customer's not going to be happy with that, or you have to tuck your amplifier further away from your living space, we're going to want to steer you into either Sonos or Vessel, which we'll talk about next. Now the Sonos Connect. What's nice about the Sonos Connect is it does not depend on Bluetooth technology to work. As long as it can access your customer's uh, network, both commercial residential network, uh, you can do so by either hardwired in the back of their uh, modem or their switch, or you can have it jump on the customer's Wi-Fi network. And you can now place this anywhere in the project so long as it can see that internet connection. And then where, wherever they're at in their living space, as long as their phone or tablet can see the same internet connection, it can drive the Sonos Connect via a Sonos app that they load on their phone. Inside of that app, you can load accounts from Spotify, Pandora, local radio stations, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and so on. And you can actually then drive the Sonos Connect from your phone, tell it what to, what to stream or what to play, and then your phone takes a step back and waits for you to tell it what to do. Uh, so text tones, phone calls don't, don't interrupt the Sonos Connect. Uh, it does allow for greater distances, so more flexibility in your installation of your projects. It does, however, require a strong internet or Wi-Fi connection. If the internet goes down, the chances are your, uh, your music streams are going to stop until that uh, internet connection gets restored. Uh, the way the Sonos Connect and the Bluetooth adapter both connect is via RCA uh, outputs and inputs. You can see we're using a traditional RCA cable 
that uh, both products come with. You can connect to the back of the Sonos with Bluetooth and into the amplifier. Uh, now we're gonna talk about Vessel. Vessel is actually a product of ours and it's brand new and you'll see it launch in about uh, 60 days, about uh, May or June of 2019. Uh, we, uh, the nice thing about Vessel is you, don't, you no longer have to live in a music app like a Sonos or home automation app like a Crestron or Control 4, Elan or Savant. You can actually have your customer live right inside of whatever native music app they're most custom to using. So if they like living in the Pandora app or the Spotify app or the Apple Music app, they can get home and continue to use that drive their outdoor audio system. Uh, it, uh, when you are on the same network as a vessel inside of the app, you can actually see a zone that pops up that says, hey, this is your outdoor audio. You want to stream your music here. Uh, there'll be an additional training on Sonos and Vessel, but uh, know that they are very similar in the fact that they both can operate on a customer's Wi-Fi network or hardwired internet connection. The major difference, however, is that Sonos requires an app where Vessel does not. Uh, the other nice thing about Vessel is it actually also has a Bluetooth adapter built into it. So if for whatever reason you're close by or you can install the Vessel close by to your uh, outdoor living area, wherever your customers will be residing, if they have to have Bluetooth but they also want streaming, Vessel is going to be able to have that built right in. Just like the uh, Sonos and the Bluetooth, we're using analog audio connections from the back of the vessel to go into our amplifiers. Uh, a quick note on 70 volt versus 8 ohm. Uh, once again, this is designed strictly to help you understand the difference between the various systems and where to potentially position them. If for whatever reason, uh, you only want to be able to daisy chain your speakers, or maybe a customer's already got some speaker wire run out into the backyard they wanna use, and maybe you only have one or two conductors, or excuse me, one or two pair of conductors. In that scenario, we're going to want to get you into our landscape system. From there, we can actually use only two speaker wires and daisy chain in your speakers and your subs and provide a great listening experience. Uh, if that, that's not possible or you don't want to really mess with that uh, and you want to maybe stay with a smaller system, that's when you're going to be using an 8-ohm system, which is basically taking a speaker wire from the back of every speaker and running it into the back of uh, the amplifier. The major differences between the two is a 70-volt technology, the speakers and the sub, have what's called a 70 volt transformer built into it that allow you to daisy chain the speakers and the subs so they won't be damaged when you run them in 70 volt. Our patio systems, our ultrascapes, our oatwells, our OPs, and our rocks, they do not have a 70 volt transformer built into them so you risk damaging them if you try and take these speakers and run them with this amplifier. Finally, the free system design, I will mention this once again, this is very important. We'd love you to take advantage of it. Uh, after the first few system designs, you'll feel, probably feel very comfortable and want to do them on your own. You're more than welcome to. Uh, but once again, the service is free. We can take anything from a sketch on a napkin, architect's rendering from a, the backyard project, or you can actually go uh, in the Google Maps, zoom in on that project. We can take a screenshot based on the address and go ahead and play speakers and subs just like this plan that you see here. Uh, we will give this to you as a deliverable not only for your customer, but it's also a great tool for your installation team be able to take this and basically replicate, place speakers and subs exactly where we've recommended. We do have a web form and a hard copy document. You can fill out either one. Really what we're trying to do with that document is help uh, understand the project uh, recommendations and specifications. We're looking for what the customer's budget may be. We're looking at uh, it, what's important to the customer from a visual performance and acoustic performance perspective. We're also wanting to know things like scale on the drawings that we are provided and also uh, if there's specific areas that we need to stay away from or that the customer wants to make sure we cover. So uh, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Once you can get the questionnaire answered and the drawings to us, it takes us anywhere from 24 to 72 hours to turn around a design service or design plan. And then obviously you can go present that to your customer. A uh, couple of FA FAQs and we'll go ahead and wrap up the presentation. Uh, the first one is, is does True Audio offer custom colored speakers or do we custom paint speakers? This comes up on a very, very regular basis. So I wanna make sure that we address it right out of the gate. The short answer to that question is yes, yes we do. It does add two things. Number one, it adds quite a bit of time because we have to use our paint shop to, uh, to do the custom, uh, the custom paint. That can add anywhere from two to three weeks on your time schedule. It may not be something that your customer wants to wait for. Uh, number two, it does add additional price or additional cost. Obviously, there's time for us to have to unbox the products and apply the custom color. Uh, so there is additional cost there. If the customer is willing to wait the time and pay the additional money, talk to us. We'll work out a price and get you, depending on what the customer wants to do, a uh, quote uh, based on uh, the, the requirements for the customer. Another question that comes up on a very regular basis is, is hey, I've got, uh, I've got this existing amplifier. I'd like to be able to drive some true audio product with it or have some true audio speakers tied to it. As I mentioned earlier, 
This is possible uh, only with our patio systems only, meaning our OLs, our OPs, our rocks, and our ultrascape system. If you're concerned whether or not the amplifier will do a good job, send us an email with the make and model once again, and we'll tell you based on the products you want to use if you can use that amplifier. Uh, another common question we get is, well, can I have some patio products tied in with our landscape uh, solution? The short answer to that question is yes. It does require some a little bit more advanced wiring. We've provided you a wiring diagram here just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. This particular scenario, we're coming out of a Sonos going into an AMP 440. That could drive two or four OLs, OPs, rocks. And then from there, we're using a loop out or the output on the back of the AMP 440 and going into a crown amplifier. Okay, another question is, is I have a satellite box and I also uh, have uh, my Sonos. I wanna be able to use both in my audio project. Can I do that? The answer to that question is yes. On the back of both the Vessel and the Sonos, you can actually uh, go from your satellite box into the inputs on the back of both of those boxes. And then within the app, uh, both the Sonos and Vessel, you can actually specify if you wanna use the line in, uh, which is going to be from your satellite box, and, or you can use obviously your music streaming. And then you come out of your Sonos box, obviously, into whatever amplifier you're using. And that's been uh, our presentation on True, Audio, True Audio's Luxury Outdoor Sound product portfolio. Uh, we hope you found it beneficial. Uh, we appreciate your time and consideration. Uh, if you have any questions that have come up, once again, please email us at sales at trueaudio.com. And a member of our team will be happy to assist you. We'd love to help you get your first audio project off the ground, and get you very comfortable positioning True Audio products and all of your projects. So once again, thank you for your time, and we look forward to working with you.